Hello everybody. In this video I will show how to download and install Visual Studio 2019 and this version is a community version and not only I will show that I will also show how to set up this that you have a nice nice setup creating your projects and you are good to go after that how to debug and how to set up the menus at the top and everything so this is my setting what I use in my everyday programming have been using this like this many years now so take an advantage of my set setup if you like it maybe not everybody likes what I have but I'll just show what I have so the first thing we do here is that we will go and google the Visual Studio Community 2019 so I'll type here Visual Studio Community 2019 download sounds logical so is it this one uh -huh. so let's go down and find that button there it is so this is a Visual Studio Community 2019 free download let's go there save and let's run it continue okay and now the installer has finished its job and we have this installation program here and we can now start installing the Visual Studio itself and this is what we want here desktop development with C++ so I choose that one and let's see what we need here as we can see the MFC is not by default chosen so this is important that we choose this one and there are other options here as well <coughs> these two might be something that uh, you might want if you have old projects like Visual Studio 2017 2015 you might want to install these ones as well so that you can open the 2017-2015 projects as they are so you might consider want to get those too I personally need them but in this <laughs> in this video I in my work I need actually this too because I I use even 2015 sometimes so so feel free to take them if you need but if you are only using the latest 2019 then you don't necessarily need them and one more thing I I always personally do that I will take the backup backup program system which is a git so git is a good way to you know have a version backup system in your project so I will take this one as, as well these are optional if you don't need git so it's up to you but I personally take those also and then just press install and let me click click off that one so now it starts installing Visual Studio oh sorry actually it's downloading it first and after download it will install it because this one takes very long time it takes like 30 minutes 40 minutes so I will stop the video now and we will continue after the installation has finished and now the installation has finished and we have this installation succeeded message here next thing we want to do is that we want to put that icon on a desktop so I will show how to do it we can open this Windows Explorer and I have that path here on a clipboard I can put it on a, on a description field this part so we go there and then I sort by type and um, there it is it's this one here so I will create the icon send to desktop there it goes I will normally modify this a little bit Visual Studio 2019 something like that I like that kind of name so now we will launch this first time now And 
and we will get this this login login screen kind of but so what what it is that um at some point need to need to have an account but i'm not gonna do it now now so i just press that one and this is how it's gonna look which color you want just se i just select the first one okay and this is the screen we get get after after it launches and now here we can start uh, start this program in a different way we can we can start an empty one or create a project let's just start with an empty empty visual studio from here so this is how it looks looks when we first start this now to to see what we need to do next i think best thing to do is just let's just create an, an mfs a mfc project now new and then we go to project i will create a windows a windows project now so we can clearly see what we need to do next so here we can choose um, desktop application because it's going to be a desktop the windows desktop application and we can select this mfc app here so this is the mfc project next and i can put here that first mfc program and place solution and project in the same director same directory i think that's a good idea and then just create let's create a single single document next 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 and i'll remove all of those then finish and so this is how it looks looks after i like these ones to be on um, on the left hand side this this file um, solution explorer so i let me try to move it there now so i place it there and these ones i want to put them on the right hand side these ones yes and that tool toolbar thing also no not like that yeah like that yeah so this is how i like it to be i like this one to be <coughs> on the left hand side now let's start looking what we have here first of all we want to have a 64 bit um, compilation normally because this is 64 bit computer i have <coughs> and now we can open here the files files from here Th these are the header files and these are the, the cpp files here and um, <coughs> we can now build this project from here so we can go build and build build this program let's just build it first And there is the build information in this output window as it's building it. Not generating code that and then succeeded. Here we can see that it was succeeded. And um, so we can press this button here to get rid of this output window, which I normally want to do at this point. So press that one. It goes there. It's now here. And then we can press Control F5 to run the program. Control F5, and there it is. And here is also we can also see that there's start debugging. Uh, sorry, Control F5 is start without debugging, and if we press F5, we will start with the with debugging. Now, the next thing I want to do here is that I want to make this as as plain as possible, as simple as possible. This toolbar because I don't I don't want to have too many things here that's just my preference so let's start changing this toolbar so it's nice for us the way we can change it that we will we go here and then uh, sorry not that one but that arrow over there so this arrow is toolbar arrow where we can modify the buttons so let's see what we want i don't need that one i don't need that one 
Also the new project, I don't want to, I never really use it on a toolbar, so I will always remove that. So this is basically what I prefer. Obviously you might prefer some other settings, but I will show what I prefer. I've I've used many years this uh, program and I never really used it via buttons. I used the menu, via menu normal these things. But I like to have the save buttons there. Undo, redo, very good. Those are good ones. And uh, that one we need. We need this debug thing there. So those platforms. That one also we need because we need to sometimes change that. So, and uh, that one we don't need. Reverse. And and then I want to get rid of this one. So where is that? Where is that? Um, start window. Yeah, that one also. We don't need that start window. Is it this one? No. How do I get rid of that? Yeah, that's the one. Debug target. So I don't use that one. I will remove that. And that's it. So this toolbar is very compact now. I like this like this. Pretty good. Only one thing one thing I want here more is that I want to have a find. I want to have a find um, edit box here so I can find text from this window. So let's add that one. I will show soon what it means. It's this find here. So this this is very good. I, I use this a lot. So let's say that you want to find something here. You want to find that color color from, from the text. So you copy that and we can place it here and then F3. There you go. So you can easily find whatever you want to find from the code. That's useful. And how about this one? What is this one? This is the, um, this is the text edit uh, toolbar. So I, I want to get rid of this totally. I don't need any of this. <coughs> I can easily do that um, on a keyboard, all of these comment and uncomment. So I will remove totally this toolbar. So we go view toolbars and it's gonna be the text editor I will remove that but what we want there is um, uh, go toolbar we want that debug debug toolbar there yeah that one and then another one we want there is oh I mean I want <laughs> people are different um, I want that build hmm. what am I doing I want that build toolbar because it's I like to press it from here. When I built the project, I want to press it from here. But let's now look to modify this because we don't want all of those buttons. So let's see what we want. I don't use that break all. The stop debugging is nice. Restart, I don't need the restart. All of these I don't need. Not that one. But these ones I like step into this are for debugging, going to the next line and going inside the function. So these are good. That one I don't I never use that. And that's it. We want to have here start debugging things. So this one we want. Start debugging and then I want one more thing here. Personally, I, I like that we have start with debugging, start without debugging. Because sometimes we want to debug, sometimes we don't want to debug. So because not debugging is faster. The, the program runs faster if we are not debugging. I might so soon what I mean. So we go here and we will add that at that other one there. It's a green arrow. Where is it? Green arrow. It's this one. Start without debugging. It's there. And one more thing I want to have here is that I want to have the, the breakpoint. Remove the breakpoints. Let's go do that one as well breakpoints not the breakpoints but the remove delete all the breakpoints because when we are adding the red breakpoints many times we want to get rid of them all all of them straight away and I will remove this uh, the, the third position so move down there close okay so that looks good to me now and then this one next this one and we want to build I never use this build solution here. We can use it from the menu, so I'll remove that because I rarely use it. I only put, put here, with, which I use a lot and constantly. Uh, so I will I will not put in the toolbar things, which I rarely use. I never use that, but the cancel is very good. Canceling the build, that's good. 
and uh, what else we need here yeah that's all we need that's all we need here okay okay that looks good <coughs> so another one i want to show here straight away is that there's a layout as i as i was just moving this because this was on the left and this was on the right so next thing i want to show is that how to save this layout here we go we go is a window yeah window save window layout and let's put here that main i mean or maybe default layout default layout i call it default layout that's it and now we can find that layout later on from here there it is uh, so let's see how this works uh, because sometimes we will make mistakes here that we might move this let's say that i make a mistake that i move this this guy over here oh what happened toolbox is there and then i do another mistake here i move this one you know this these things happen right <laughs> these things happen. oh oh what am i doing kid, kid is there and so these windows is they go in the wrong places and but here is the help we can go here window and go back to the original default you see very good so now we are back to the original which we like like to have normally so i think that's a nice one <coughs> uh, one more thing here is that this output window yeah the output window is good now actually uh, that's how i want i want this output window to be very wide we want to see the because when we are building uh, let's build now so i press from here build okay yeah this is what i want uh, so i want this one to be wide and let me show how to do that if it's not there i put it let's say that it, it's here the output how to put that into that good place so we drag it and then at the bottom put just place there and that's it that's where i want this one to be i want to be wide now let's make an error in this and i press this button out of height because i don't want to see it and now let's let's make an error here i remove that remove that e here and then we build and let me let me change the file so there is an error in the code i built so now we can see that error here and now we can see that error here in the output let's go to the output mi output window we will go to the output window now and here is the error uh, it says that the e is missing undeclared identify so how to fix that error just go here and double click that one and it will take you here and then we we fix the error <coughs> and that's it close that window okay <coughs> and what is the next thing to do then one thing which is which is a uh, good here a uh, good to know here is that how to how to switch from 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 file to another file so we are in now in this file view so now press control tab control tab to together and it will go to the to the previous view and then if you press again control tab it will go back where you were so there's an order here like this it's very good like if, let me close all of these um all of these files let's do it again so this is the view and let's say i want to open the document and then i want to open the the app we have three open and I go to the view and um, <coughs> so now I in a view uh, if I press control tab it will go to the document and if I press again control tab after a couple of seconds it will go back there so you can go backwards and forwards but we need to wait a couple of seconds because if I do quickly tw twice control down and I press tab quickly twice one two it goes to the third third in a row so it goes two back and now if i do only once it go back it goes back to the v so this is handy and the next thing is okay so let's say that we have a we have a f some cpp file for example here which we don't want to build this is handy to know so we will go here let's say that we we are testing something and we are adding some cpp files here and we want we don't want to build this we want to exclude this one from the build so right click properties 
and just go there and say yes exclude from build just be sure to select here which targets you are aiming here so so let's say that you want to exclude it from from uh, debug and release both of them so that we will choose all configurations and uh, yeah this is normally always 64 so yeah so and now we do it again so now it's for all configurations for debug and release both of them and press ok so now there's a red a red circle there telling that it's not compiled but we will want that this time so i will remove it back no and the next thing will be that let's start debugging now let's start debugging i put a debug point somewhere here it doesn't matter really i just put here let's put here some code int i equals to 8 and then let's change that to 99 and then we will build this from here and now we can put the breakpoint here so here just click here to put the breakpoint and f5 starts starts debugging or we can also press here this one start debugging f5 because we are debugging now so f5 and we will start debugging there we go and now now pressing f10 we can go to the next line here so now we can now we, we can go line by line and check these variables it it has not executed this line yet so we can press f10 or we can go yeah that's the, that's the one or this this uh, it says f10 there we can press this button or press f10 so i'm pressing f10 and now we can check the value of that i you see in in the tooltip it's 8 the value is 8 Another handy version in Visual Studio is that we can actually modify this on a run. So now I can modify the code. I equals to 5. As we are debugging, we can actually do that. And now let's go to the next line, F10. It will compile the project and continue. So this is now in the latest version of this build. It's there. So I is now 99. We can also see all kind of values here, autos and locals here in this debug window here. Auto variables and local variables here. We can see that the i is 99 here. And let's now look at the watch window next. So in the watch window we can we can add what variables we want to be watching uh, as we are going line by line. So stop the debugging from there, the red red circle. And let's now add, uh, I assume that people know about the classes, so I'm going to add add one variable in the class here, just anything, int a, I will initialize it to 24. So let's say that we, for some reason, we want to be observing this a value in this function. So I'll show how to do that, compile, and then again we press the F5 to start debugging. I'll press this one f5 there we go and now let's go one line and now we can in the watch here we can now put here what what variable we want to watch live so it's gonna be because it's it's inside the variable is, is not in this function it's the member variable of this class so we will say this this and then we will select was it a and press enter yeah there it is you see it's 24 that's the value I assigned here so even though we are in a different function we can look anything here and that's it that's how we can we can add here other variables as well and so on let's stop the debugging now okay and um, let's look at just quickly quickly one more thing here regarding this one and f f11 goes inside the function so let's say that we have a function here I quickly show it here void foo i create a full function here and uh, let's implement that there if we want to debug 
and go into another function. It's just basics of debugging. I think many people know this already, but let me just let's put the same code there. Put the uh, call it G G yeah and uh, <coughs> like that. And let's build this. Oh, let's call it actually also. That's the whole purpose here. So let me call that function here foo. So let's go inside that function when we are calling it just to quickly show that f5 start debugging. We go to the next line f10 and now we want to go inside this function because we are calling this foo function. We want to go inside so f11 or you press that button you press that button this button here step into f11 so here it goes and now f10 go line by line and now it goes back here that's it okie dokie so what is the next thing i need to need to or i want to show how to say it okay let's talk about tracing the values so many times when we are creating especially windows programs we want to uh, you know debug the values into a window like let, let's talk about for example the 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 thing that we are moving the mouse here i'm moving the mouse i want to see what are the values of the mouse like now it's zero zero and 100 100 here i want to see live the mouse values when i'm checking the program the way to do is we can there are two ways we can print those values they're gonna go to the output window we want to we can print them into the output window and i will show how to do it but before we do that we need to create the mouse handler function so i will quick, quickly uh, quickly do that here i'm not going to go to details here but i'm just want i just want to show that uh, debugging thing so we need to have the class class view top here as you see we we don't have it because we need to add the mouse handler function so in in order to see that class view we go here and class view it's quite interesting by the way it's not by default there because we need this often this thing here so just add it from the view and here we need to select um, the project open the project here and we need to select the class where we want to add that event handler we want to add the mouse event handler in this case in this case so it's gonna be in a view window that white window select that, that one and then and then there should be a properties again there's no properties here is it aha the properties window is now missing so we select this class view and now we want to we need these properties here but what i normally like is that these properties i want these properties to be on the right hand side here so i'm going to move it there so i'm going to track from the tab from here and then move it move it here and i move it to be together with those other two in the middle here and that's it so this is how i like it to be and i'm actually gonna save it this layout now because this is the layout i like and so i say default i i override it yeah because this is the one i like so so now what we can do that we, we will select the the view class the white window and then we will go and uh, find out uh, the left button uh, sorry the mouse move uh, message there it is and then we will create the message handler here it is and now here we can we can trace here the first function we we will check here is called trace and here we can uh, trace the values and so it's going to be this is a unicode unicode string and then we can put here um, d is d is integer that's the placeholder for the integer and then we can say here that that point x and point y we want to print the point point values here x and point value y and i think we, i need to put here the new line here like that and then debug uh build and then finished and now we will 
now we will press F5 to debug those values and now what we want is that we want to see the output so here is the output window I will a little, little bit increase the width so we can clearly see that so there are the values so you see you see them they are changing there the values so here's the zero 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 100 100 but the problem with this trace is that it keeps printing this one here which I don't really like I want to get rid of this one and I was actually struggling with this one years ago the way to do one way to do is it that is that we will use another another function here which is called output debug output debug string and now this output debug string um, and white white means unicode a means ascii let's use unicode because we are using unicode strings here anyway so to do this one we will just copy that that one from there and put it inside aha no 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 it, this one takes a string as you can see it takes a string so we can't do it inside here we need to create a c string object here and uh, called str and then we will put that put that string at whatever we want there using the format format and then we will put the same thing there and then we will print this string here we will first format the string to contain the x and y and then we will print it here like that yes so let's run it now and now we should only get the uh, the point values f5 and there we go so now we will get i like this one obviously much cleaner that's how to do it we can use this function output debug string and um, <coughs> so how do we create classes L let's say that I want to add a new class here let's say that uh, instead of using this this white window I want to create a new class like a form window and use it instead go here and we go to the class wizard if you want to create an MFC class we will go to class wizard okay and it's here it's a little bit a little bit like a uh, hidden there you need to go via the class wizard and then mfc class and uh, here we can say c second let's let me call it my form my form and then we can derive it whatever we want it to be so let me choose form window this time form view i mean it's a view, so it needs to be view, form view. And then we press OK. So there is the form view. And now let's quickly use it here just to prove it works. I will include it here. Let's see my form view. And let's use it instead of using the white window let's use that form window so here it is i will remove that that default window and put that form view there and uh, one trick we need to do we need to move these constructors and these structures to public section here otherwise it doesn't compile and now build and uh, there we go so now we are now we have form window one more thing i want to show here is that let's say that we created this project and we want to send it to uh, to somebody like you want to send it to your friend your friend to run this one way you can do is is, is that we need to clean it because the the size of this project is is very big normally it, it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger it can be even hundreds of megabytes so we want to make it as small as possible first first things first this is the way to go to the folder where this project is so we can right click this one this this tab and then open containing folder so that takes us to where it is and here we can see that the big files at the moment so we, we see that there are no big files here 
so we can kind of keep them but this is the this x64 is the folder we don't need to send to our friend so we can delete that x64 before i do, do that i will first do the clean from here clean solution and there is also a clean project here depending what you want what you need to clean and then we can go here and just delete that x64 that's where the building is happening we don't need to send the build files and now now the size should be pretty okay use aha it's not actually <laughs> aha it's good that i checked this because i forgot to do one thing so this is too big 200 megabytes so let's see why it's so big this is good to know by the way and it's quite tricky isn't it because there there is no there are no big files here and if, even if we go here these are small icons so there's nothing there so why is it so big it's because there is a hidden it hidden folder here so let's go to the view and so the hidden files and and so that's the that's the one so that's the one we need to also delete the the clean doesn't do that which which i don't know why it doesn't do that but so we need to de delete this one this hidden hidden folder also so delete it doesn't let delete that because the because the project is still running here so we need to close the project going here actually solution sorry going here closing the solution first and then we can go there and uh, delete that folder okay and now if we go and look at the size of this folder it's only very small only only 400 kilobytes and now we can zip this obviously sent to like that right and send that zip file to your friend that's how it works and now how, how do we go back to the project so the the recently opened project are here so we can go and open it from here again and that's it so now i want to show one more thing um, that if we are creating normal c++ programs like just using the console window and the main i quickly saw how to do that one so let's close this one to create normal a normal uh, i close that one as well we go here new project so we'll create the c++ console program the text text um, user interface so going here and then we can choose here the console and it's gonna be console we can choose a ready-made file with hello world or just an empty one and um, let's choose the empty one so that i can show how to add add the file there so i choose i create an empty project I'll just call it project one doesn't matter okay so there are no files here and let's let's add that main file here go here add new item and it's gonna be cpp file let's call it main sounds good okay and let's add some code here include include io ios stream and then how quickly i can do this let's see I've done this many times. Oh, one more thing, by the way. You see that the font is pretty small here. I saw one more thing here. I forgot to show that how to change the font size. So we can go to the tools, customize, not, <laughs> not this one, tools, options, sorry, options. And here, here are the fonts. We can change that. If needs to be a little bit bigger, if the size of the font is not good so let me change it to 12 here for example uh, that's it and then let's say std c out hello and oh well let's be let's be good programmers and do this thing here okay and then build 
and then control F5 to run the program. There, you, there we go. And we can run it for also from here. And let's add the class here. One more thing I want to do here is that I want to show how to add a normal class, like not an MFC or Windows class, what we did uh, in the STD project. Let's add a normal class. By the way, we want to change this one to 64 bit here. We run 64. And now let's add a normal class. So we can go to project, add class, and let's call it human, human class. We human details and that's how it goes and there it is uh, yeps is this all I had this time yeah this is pretty much all I had and this is a very good I I've used this many years and this is the best ID I think in my opinion and and I hope that you enjoyed this and you know how to do the basics now thank you for watching and see you in the next video